right. Happy Friday, friends. It's Lauren here at Craft Some Joy. And yay, I'm finally seeing the hellos come through. It's so nice to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you for joining me. So I see we've got Facebook going and YouTube. So welcome, welcome. Virginia's here. Jenny's here. Ruth, Cindy, Carolyn, Maria. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for hopping on tonight and joining in Friday Night Scrapbooking. And <laughs> Cindy, you're so funny. Her Hudson cart came in yesterday and it's full. <laughs> Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means in just a minute, but um, just a quick hello. Thank you guys for joining me for Friday Night Scrapbooking. And tonight, we are going to do a little something different. Um, we're going to kind of go through some new products because my goodie box came in early. <laughs> so I'm excited, and I thought maybe instead of me just kind of opening it by myself, by my lonesome, I thought maybe you guys would like to open it with me. I know some of you may already have some of your good stuff too, but if you want to see some of it, we'll do that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about pocket page layouts. And we're cycling back into this because I still think it's a really important thing to talk about. And so we're going to just have a little bit of a conversation about pocket page layouts and how we can use them for some different scrapbooking ideas and just kind of have some fun. So um, that's the layout for tonight. And I, I have to be honest with you guys, here's the deal. I actually was in bed pretty much all day yesterday. So I lost the day because I had my COVID booster and it wiped me out. So I almost was like so close to going, should I cancel? Because I'm not as prepared as I normally am. So full disclosure, guys, I'm not as prepared <laughs> as I usually am. So you might have to help me a little bit tonight. Let's still make this fun. And I thought, no, I'm just, I'm still going to show up. We're going to, we always have something good to talk about. And just to be able to be here together is always just such a treat. So anyhow, I just need to let you know, I would have prepared a little bit more if I could have. <laughs> so um, that's that's just what I want to say. All right. So if you are brand new here, I would love to know that. And also, I would just also like to let you know all the places you can find me <laughs> are here and around the web. You can find me on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and I have a website, craftsomejoy.com. And yeah, Bobby says she got her tools today. The new tools are so very pretty and I have them here too. So if you were debating, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Carol. I am, I am feeling so good today, but yesterday I was not feeling so good. Wow. Those, you know, I think everybody has just a different reaction, right? And I was just woof, <laughs> out of it, totally out of it, but I feel good because I have you know, again, a booster. And well, it was, I think they said they reformulated it. So anyhow, it was a doozy. Um, so I feel better, so much better. So I just want to be here today. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys for your sweet wishes. All right. Um, uh, okay. So let's, let's get started. And I have to say also, this is kind of a new thing being in this room. Can you guys see the sun? <laughs> at this time of year. So I'm going to have some of this going on. Okay. <laughs> I just can't help it. You guys, that's the way what's happening. I'm, I'm, I'm realizing, I think what I need to do is actually get, um, some shades, like little cellular shades for those windows, because now that the sun is lower, do you guys see that? I've got, I'm getting all these weird, rays coming through. So I don't have, I don't have curtains. And that's why you also see lots of reflection on my glasses. So I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah, I'm glowing. I'm glowing, Cheryl. Right. So um, 
we're going to just deal with that. I've got to get some shades on order so that I can kind of control some of this glare going on. So it's just all new. It's just fun. We're here together, guys. Um, and let's just let's just have a good time. OK, so thank you. Thank you all for I am so excited to see you guys here. OK, let's jump in. I'm not even going to show you a video this time because guess what? The 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 birthday week promos they're gone they're gone and over they were they were so fast right so let's jump on to my overhead camera and i think you might see some kind of weird um yeah see look at that Woo! we're gonna do and and i have my lights on and they're helping a little bit but still i've got you know, we're just going to do this. Okay. Are you ready? I feel like I need some more of that jazzy background music, but here we go. I'm going to, I thought I'd leave it blank slate and then let's go. Here is the polar lights. Okay. So who has the polar lights in their hands already? Who has polar lights in their hands already? I did not get the album. I just got the bundle. Okay. So that includes tools and I'm I'm so so excited I have so many more border maker systems okay did you guys see the new I haven't even opened it ice blue fine tip pen okay there's that um so shades of polar lights we've seen this if you got it in the promo but here is the new paper pack okay Yes, we are live, Sandra. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, I'm going to just scooch this so you can see this a little better right there. Okay, so Sandra says she's getting hers Wednesday. Okay, Cindy's is in her order, but not here yet. Okay, so we can see some of this up close. Up close. Okay, and I'm seeing there's all kinds of just weird reflections going on. So sorry, <laughs> sorry about that, you guys. All right. Um, let's see what we can do. Is it this one? Maybe we can try to get this up a little bit there. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. Okay. Oh, that's a little better. Not so much reflection there. All right. Ha! Snows maybe once a winter here and only lasts a couple of days. So I didn't get it this one this year. Yeah, the last winter collection. I know, Shri. Actually, you know, the um I, I was I was debating and then I saw the polar bears. <laughs> They're so cute, right? The polar bears. And then oh I haven't finished because polar bears. Polar bears. I haven't even opened it yet. See, I just I was just waiting for you guys. And then they also decided to release the new square and circle maker. Okay, so we got the, I got those. And I thought maybe tonight it would also be good to take a look at this. Um, I have not even opened them. I know I got a few questions like how big are they? You know, are they going to punch the same? I don't know. Let's find out together. And then they also, um, there's just a couple more days left on these beauties, right? So, oh, at least the sun is showing how pretty these are, right? Can you guys see that? Um, this is foiled. So there's only two, let's see, November 11th, I think. Only till November 11th. <laughs> the, the polar bears and hot cocoa embellishments are her favorite. Okay, I gotta, we got to dig in there and see those, Sandy. All right. So these um, last few days for these guys, these are still available, but um, only a few more days on those. And then, um, <laughs> see, I don't even need a movie because I got it all today. I'm so excited. So then what happens is what happened in the past week. If you got your order in early enough, right, you got the physical copy of 110 scrapbooking ideas and sketches. These are border ideas. So this is different than the last book. This is borders. Who here are my border <laughs> fans? I know you guys. I know how excited you probably were when you saw this. 
all kinds of borders. Yeah, I think the only thing that could have made this better are dimensions. But if you were watching um, Noreen, I think, you know, she had a really good tip about dimensions. And that is sometimes if you're looking at an embellishment that they've used, you can use that to kind of start, um, start your layout you know, kind of like get this embellishment out, see how big it is, or this one, and then go, okay, if that's an inch and a half wide, then this whole border is probably two or two and a quarter inches and kind of build from there, right? So, yeah, yep, I, there's my border, girl. There's my border, friends. <laughs> okay, I know, I know. Maybe what we'll have to do, I don't know, we might have, maybe we'll have to kind of just flip through and pick one try one tonight huh I don't know would you guys like that because like I said I didn't really have a whole lot of time to prepare so maybe maybe we just have to kind of wing it oh that's a cute one um and maybe we'll have to dig into that and do it so you you got the the border um book of ideas and sketches now if you if they ran out, you were able to also get this as a digital download, and then they switched the border to um, they switched the promo instead of this and the physical book. You got a brand new border cartridge. I don't have that yet, um, and it was a different edge. Now that's all gone. Okay, I'm sorry, it's gone, but you can still get the frosted cupcake. So this was also. <laughs> This was also kind of a, a, wow, did that sell out that fast? Um, if you just wanted the cartridge by itself. But friends, if you are just dying to have the cupcake, right? Um, then you can get your very own cupcake with the brand new blue border maker system. Haven't even opened this, you guys. Oh, so fun. <laughs> yeah, Bobby says the book is very pretty. I know. I I'm a I'm a paper girl. Love to have the book. Oh, it actually comes inside. The cartridge comes inside. Look at that. So I will probably have a few extras that I'll be um, putting into the into the shop uh, after my expo. So in case you haven't heard, I'm actually doing. It's a convention. Another convention. I, I just had, I, I, I just decided I wanted to go out and have some more fun. So I'll be in Scottsdale, Arizona next weekend. Can't believe it's here already. Next weekend at Westworld in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's for the Pinners Conference. So this is going to be so different and so new. So if you are in the area, please stop by. I'd love to see you. You can get half off coupon uh, for entrance with the code SHOP, S-H-O-P. And I have that posted on my Facebook page in case you're wondering. So this is the very same. There's nothing different about the system except the color. So, um, you know, I guess if you have friends that you'd like to gift your original one to, then you can um, justify getting the new one. And it does come with the cupcake border maker cartridge. Okay. And then the housing unit. So that's going to be kind of fun. I thought I deserve it. I do videos. I make this fun for you guys. So let's do something different and see what the blue looks like. <laughs> and um, yeah, Jean, you just just message me. Jean will talk. No worries. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, here is the trimmer. So this is super. <laughs> As Sue says, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> I'm going to go crazy with the book. I know I'm such a border girl. I really, really am. Okay. So, wow. Look at this. It's so shiny. It's collecting dust already <laughs> in my room. Okay. But that is the blue new trimmer. And I believe that both of these tools are available while supplies last. I know there's not like an indefinite supply of these, 
but uh, they're still available. So um, I just wanted you to see them up close and personal. I will start using it because this is just too cute, I think. I love the blue. I love the blue. Something new and different. Okay, I did, um, you know, kind of... <laughs> I love hacking my tools, so um, I, I may have to figure out how to redo my all my numbers and so forth, um, but we will see. And I mm, wonder if I could show you, I could show you something, a little something. Um, we could do that tonight, maybe. Okay, let me see. So uh, just in the, in the interest... <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, why isn't the base of this trimmer six inches? But you know, there is a way that you can create a little six inch tab for this so that, you know, of course you can pull out the arm, but some of us just don't want to have the room, <laughs> right? Like this, <laughs> that we're struggling to get that arm out, right? To the six inches. So a little hack that um, that I love and I cannot remember I think someone may have done a video on this I'm sorry if I'm um, I, I just can't remember who that was so here's my little label maker so you can um, take hold on a second okay whoops go back and what I'm doing is I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to, uh, I did this on my other trimmer, so I thought I'd share this here. So I'm just doing some, some, uh, tabs and then, um, I'm going to press the number six. Okay. So that's going to be my six inch and oops, I have to make sure. Well, we can just do it with the clear. Um, and then I'm going to press some more spaces. Okay. So I want, like the six, I can't unplug it, but let me see if I can show you. I want the six to be right in the center, okay? I know a lot of you have label makers, so, okay, so now I'm just gonna print this, and I'm hoping I remember this correctly. Oh, this six is really big. Okay, so <laughs> it'll be easy for you guys to see, but you may wanna do it a little smaller. So then what you can do is just go and, all right, so get your Sharpie and um, let's see, let's see. I'm just gonna use this for now. Um, and you're gonna mark a line on your six, right? And then, ha have you guys seen this before? Have you seen this done? So, and then you line it up here Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is peel this off. So we'll get to use this tonight so you can see how this works. And I'm only going to cut, it's a little bit of a hack here, guys. I'm only gonna cut, um, and so if you do it on white tape, it's a little easier, of course, right? So I'm gonna cut, a little bit of this backing off, but I'm just gonna leave a little backing. Let's see, there we go. You can always peel some more of that off. And you could always put your white, some white paper back there too. Okay, but the idea is um, you can, oh, so, and you can also do five and a half. So if you wanna make a line five and a half, that's another popular measurement is right to the edge of your trimmer right here. And so, um, actually, I, I guess you don't need this side of it. You just need this little bit. See, it would have worked out a lot better, I think, on white tape. Anyhow, you get it, right? So, you need to lift it. And now you have a little six inch mark. I'm gonna show you close, right? So, and, and it's just kind of loose and I can, I can see I need to kind of trim a little bit more off the edge here. Let's do that so it's nice and clean. Just like that. 
Okay. There we go. So there's my six inch mark. So I like using um, the label tape because, you know, you can just stick it right down and then you can still see the measurements right through there. Okay. So that's my favorite little hack. I, I don't know if I've ever talked about that here on Friday Night Scrapbooking, but <laughs> that's a fun little little um, add to your trimmer so that you can you don't always have to flip your um, arm out just to get that six inch measurement. And like I said, you could also put a line here for five and a half. Okay, and you could do as many lines as you want. So um, I don't see, does anybody? You can see the cut lines a lot better on this one. Did, has anybody tried this? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. I didn't see anybody in the chat say that they've tried it. So let me know if you tried it, if you like it. So the little six inch mark there. Okay. All right. That's just something that popped into my head. I thought we might share tonight. Okay. So um, let's take a closer look. Oh, the sun is now going down. So you can see all my weird reflections are starting to go away. I'm going to just tuck this right here so we can take a look at, and I'll leave the border book out, and we can take a look at these tools. Okay, so who has the, um, I, I need to grab, hold on a second, forgot to get something. Uh, Oh, you know what? I think I left my other shape maker. Well, I was going to. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have to, <laughs> like I said, not quite as prepared. I have this old shape maker. So it went um, three quarter, one, I believe it went to one and a half. No, one and a quarter, one and a half. Maybe you guys can help me. Let's take a look at what these are. Or has anybody found? Um, oh, these are big. This is big. Okay, let's see how big this is. Where's my ruler? on my cart. We're going to talk carts in a sec. Okay, guys, here we are. This is, I think maybe we need to punch it and then figure it out. Let's see. I don't know if this is going to fit the whole thing. Nope. I need another scrap. One sec. Let me get my scraps and... You guys know where my scraps are in my little scrap box if you've been watching um tidy up tuesdays right okay so here's my little yellow is nice and bright so you guys can see it let's see how big that is has anybody looked it's just over an inch and a half but it's not exactly hmm Oh, it's an inch and three quarter, I think, at the widest part. Have you guys done that measurement yet? So, if you're wondering, it's an inch and three quarters. Oh, yes, carts are your friends. <laughs> so, the circle is an inch and three quarters, which, if I remember, this goes three quarter, one, one and a quarter, one and a half, so this would be bigger, right? Aha, uh -huh. let's see. Can someone verify that for me that has, you know which one I'm talking about. I accidentally left that downstairs. I was gonna bring that up here for you guys to so we could check it out. If you have the old ones, if you don't, don't worry about it. We've got a new one, so let's take a look. That's a nice size circle. And then let's take a look at the squares. The new punch. Well, this is the new punch. I measured, I measured at the widest part, one and three quarter for the circle. 
So let's see the square. Oh, I'm gonna have to get another <laughs> another scrap. Hang on. Let's do orange. Oh, gotta get a big enough one. Here we go. Orange. And this one's gonna be. They punch, wow, they punch really nice. I, they did still have some oil on it. I should have used a scrap first. Okay, let's measure it. One and three quarter, again. Okay, one and three quarter again. So, these I think would be the fifth step up in the series if you had the old series, like the old circle makers. So, that's good to know, right? I hope I hope that was helpful. Um, the new punch, oh, good question, Pam. The new punch is smaller than what the circle cutter can do. Okay, the circle cutter, the, the circle, the, the little one, right? Not the custom cutting system. The circle cutter, the smallest uh, circle that can make is three inches. So absolutely yes. And then let's check it against, I mean, I think you could do it with this, but it might be a, di so it's bigger than the inside of this. And if you're with the green blade, it looks a little smaller, right? So I think it's a little smaller than the green blade of this one. But that's a good question. Let's see. I don't know if I'm gonna make it on here. We can try. Or I could get another scrap paper. <laughs> yeah, I need another scrap paper. One second. <laughs> I should have just brought my scrap box over here. Okay, yep, I'm gonna do that. You guys have seen my scrap box. If you've been watching Paper Organization, I love this box. It has all my fun little scraps in here. So let's just grab a little red scrap for this demo. I don't know, I guess I'm going all primary. Okay, so green is the smallest circle you can cut on the inside track. No, blue. Hold on. <laughs> Blue, blue is the smallest, right? It goes green, blue, red. Um, no, red, green, blue, sorry. I think I still have a little COVID brain <laughs> from, my, from my immunization there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's check it out. Here's, here's, okay. So where'd my yellow circle go? It stuck to the bottom of the mat. Okay. Oh, look at that. So it's different. It's different. It's different. So this is the red one is the inside track blue. And then the yellow is our new circle punch. Okay. And then this is the square, which I think that's just a really nice size square. And again, yeah, it's one and three quarter inches. One and three quarter, same for the circle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, cut, the cutting system misses the three quarter inch sizing. Yes, and maybe Deborah, that's why they did the punches at the three quarter, right? So great. A great observation on that but you could you could see that would make kind of a cool layering piece because it's just a little bit smaller all right yeah i like this square too oh there we go all right so a little little fun um show and tell with that and that way i know hopefully that's a good comparison for the new the new punches and I'm sure there's going to be just a boatload of ideas on how to use those, right? Oh my goodness, probably so many. Okay, so 
we have the polar lights. Let's take a quick look at this. Then maybe what we'll do before we jump into pocket page. <laughs> you made it, Bobby. Yes. Great for clustering. Absolutely. That's what I love shapes for. Shapes are so perfect for giving things a home, right? When you have, am I missing? Oh, here, embellishments. Here they are. When you have like miscellaneous embellishments or stickers and all that kind of stuff, a shape is just perfect for grounding that all into one place and kind of making it all feel like it belongs together, right? So here's the Polar Lights paper. So I'll do the one flip over here. Ooh, we've got trees. Okay, so how about you guys think of some other things you think this would work for besides snow? It's awfully pretty. It's a lot of blues. I remember some of you were asking for more blues. That's super cute. So anybody gone on an Alaska cruise, this would be perfect, right? <laughs> but some of this blue paper, this is definitely, like, this reminds me of kid-friendly, doesn't it? Just that. That, to me, could go boy or girl right there. Those two papers, for sure. Even this one, too. We could make a non, um, non-polar non-snowy feel border with those three papers. This one is definitely snowflake borders. So there's a there's a cut apart border strip paper and then on the back of that is snowflakes. So interesting. Maybe what we're going to have to do is show how we can use these three sheets in a border that's non- well, there's so many, actually. Look at this. That's kind of non. This is just blues. We're just blue, blue, blue. And maybe this one, too. Okay. So let's let's see if what we can come up with with uh, something different with that. Okay. And let me move my scraps. And then you guys have seen polar lights. Let's take a quick look at the embellishments. And then I haven't opened these either. They said they were flocked, right? So, oh, lots here. These are definitely snowy themed. Lots of skis. Let's see if we can find. We've got trees, mittens, snowmobile. That's kind of a cute one. This one with the little trees. I'm going to set that aside just for fun. Oh, is this the one, Sandy? Hot cocoa? Look at that little hot cocoa embellishment. Okay, so very cute. Oh, look at the penguins. That's so sweet. Okay, more here. Let's see. Winter. These are all pretty thematic. That's pretty though, look at that, winter and hot cocoa weather. Hello. Okay. And then some bling to go along with it. And let's see, the flocked, okay. Sometimes you feel the need to go where collections, yeah, <laughs> the collections can be used, okay. I know, like, why don't we all go on an Alaskan cruise? Because now they have such a pretty embellishment and <laughs> paper collection, right? <laughs> okay. And the circle with the trees looks like northern lights. It really does, doesn't it, Deb? It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah. Okay, I think I can try to get this light back down now. Let's see. Hopefully, oh, it's a little glary there. Okay, maybe I'll move this one. Get you a little more light so you can see. Okay. It's just that plastic. The plastic. Okay, so these are flocked. Ooh, yes. So lovely. Can you 
Can you hear it? I'm not sure if you can hear it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, they, they have a, um, definitely that, that, um, powdery feel to them. So pretty. Okay. And some cute, cute, cute. Oh, look, a little penguin escaped my embellishments. Okay. He's cute too. So that's really pretty, <clears throat> but I can see how some of you, like me, I'm in Southern California, so I don't get a lot of this unless I go to it. And so let's just see what we can maybe come up with um, doing something with this. This is really pretty. Maybe. Ooh. Oh, look, there's more of the Northern Lights. That one's pretty, too. All right. And then stickers. Stickers. <clears throat> okay. One quarter and one half. Thank you, Rosalind. Yeah. One quarter and one half. That's what I thought it was. Thank you for checking. So this is, this was the um, small size, three quarter, one inch. Then it goes one and one quarter, one and a half. And now we have one and three quarters. So it's the next size up. It's the fifth one. Thank you. Awesome. The Yeti ride at Animal Kingdom. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. Love that idea. Oh, look at, oh, and yeah, that's cute. We actually took the kids on, um, in Finland, we did a little dog sled ride. So that would be really cute to use, but I already did my travel book with those pages. I don't know, maybe I have to just do another page with those because now there are dog sled stickers, right? <laughs> yeah, so Deb says she thinks it's really pretty. And there's some little snow angels in here, hot cocoa mugs, some more hot cocoa mugs. Those are really cute. Yep, the wonder of winter, that's pretty. Dressed to chill, oh, that's cute, dressed to chill. Okay, so there's the stickers, and then there's the last piece, of course, is the map pack, and we can take a quick peek at that, and then let's, um, I want to open that pen and see how, oh, sorry, oh, that was loud, okay, <laughs> all right, this one is Snow Buddy Like You, oh, these are cute. So there's the four by six mats, just a lot of different um, titles on those. And then these are the four and a half by six and a half. These usually have all the patterns and good stuff that you can mat your photos with. And also some more journal boxes. Awesome. Cute. Okay. So we can see that. And let's take a quick look at this pen, friends, here. And has anybody tried this out? In Sydney, you only get rain. Oh, yes. We have SeaWorld. Yes. <laughs> Some of those would apply for Florida. Yeah, I agree. So it's kind of fun just to see it. So this one is called um, Polar Lights. Polar. Oh, it's darker than I thought. So there's the blue pen. Can you guys see that okay? So it's okay, it's actually, I thought it was gonna be super light like the top, but it's it's darker. It's a nice, nice blue. That's pretty. Okay, yay! <laughs> okay, so I think that there's a lot of good indoor ice park. I think there, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of good ideas on Things that we can do <clears throat> with all these kind of fun things and uh, we can take a look at that okay so I know you guys probably probably want to see a couple more punches punched maybe yes and then we'll maybe do a quick little border and then 
talk about pocket pages, which is kind of my thing right now. So I'm going to open these. This is the Snowflake Chain. Okay, that's a new one. This is the Cupcake. <clears throat> and remember, it's still available with the Border Maker system. And the Polar Bears. Okay, so I think I'll just actually use this this index sheet here. Or maybe I have another one. Let me see. I think I have a... another one. Let's check it out. Pale, these are the polar bears. So this is just kind of a trial run, but it is really cute to make the polar bears come out white, right? But this is going to have a little bit of that oil residue, I think, on the first couple of punches. And I, who was it? Someone said, Oh, we have brown bears here in California, and we have a lot of brown bear. We have a lot of brown bears. I have been wanting to do pages of all these bear shenanigans that we find at our house, and I thought, oh, those actually you could you could use those for brown bears or polar bears, right? Those are pretty cute, pretty cute. So there's the polar bear chain. And then let's go ahead and use the new border maker system. Ooh, so fun, so fun. Okay, so let's do the snowflakes first. And then, I don't know, you probably have already seen people using the cupcake already, right? So we'll just take a quick look at the snowflake. I have really thick paper in here. Right now. Oh dear, there we go. But it's going, it's going. And this makes some really cute little snowflakes for sprinkles would be really fun. Okay, and one more. There we go. That's pretty. Oh, love it. Yay. Okay, and here's the fallout. Now that's funny, only some of them are whole. And some of them are halves. Interesting. But there are some really cute little snowflake punches that come out from, from that uh, border maker cartridge. Okay. All right. Oh, there's another one. The, oh, those would be such cute sprinkles and pocket pages now are peekaboo pockets. Now, I hope you saw my happy hauntings peekaboo pocket with the little bats and stars in it. And uh, you could do the same idea, right? So cute. Okay, let's do one more little run with some cupcakes. <clears throat> and see what happens. I'm gonna punch this a little bit, see if there's any residue. So it looks like, uh, yeah, cute. Oh, is this fun? I hope this is fun for you guys. <laughs> Just watching me sit here and punch. There's something fun about punching though, for sure. Okay. This is a, a very, very useful border cartridge, I think. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're gonna bring that back because I could see all kinds of fun things to do with that. So there they are. We've done the square, the circle, the polar bears, the snowflakes, and the cupcakes. This one is snowflake circle chain. All right. You guys ready? Let's do, let's make something. Let's make something now that we've tested everything. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can 
pull something together and make actually make something. So in case you're wondering why I have to use a piece of paper on my workspace. So this mat right here, um, I decided to use a um, silicone base. And it's just kind of a way of protecting my workspace. But if you guys have ever worked on silicone, you, you can see it. everything sticks to it. <laughs> crazy like crazy so um it's just really hard to get things off <clears throat> but let's come back with the mat and we've got our samples over there let's see what we can do let's take a look at the border book i there was one in here that kind of caught my eye for using this collection. I'm kind of coming back to this one, the great outdoors. What do you guys think? Why don't we try that? This is really pretty. I love it. And what I like about this is it's kind of all contained within the border and but you've got this great area right here to cluster. So let's take a look at what we can do to kind of make this and and how far different can you get with that right like here's great outdoors let's use some polar lights i've got it all pulled out right here let's see what we can do and like i said i'm gonna try to see if we can make this work like i know if you have snow pictures that's obvious right obvious obvious but let's do the non-obvious thing and see what we can pull and let's see we've got we need a base so I kind of like this um, let's see now this one's kind of fun I like this for the base that's gonna go where this dark green is and then we need a lighter let's see so I'm kind of just looking at tones here on the border so I think that might be kind of fun doing a piece of this uh, multicolor and then a, a lighter tone on the bottom. So maybe going this way. And let's see, we've even got a third color. So we can do this one is it actually looks like hmm three layers one two three and it looks like it's done with the circle pattern which we have out I'm wondering if we can incorporate some circle punching in here and I think what I want to do is actually bring this fourth color in so the one I'm not going to use is this wavy one right now and I, I kind of want to punch this with the cupcakes. Okay, so bear with me. We're, we're going to actually turn this into... So I'm looking at the back. And I think I'd like this more as a um, vertical. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch the side so that I can cut strips on the back if I need to. Okay, so... Because on this side it doesn't look like it really makes a difference. All right, let's just let's just play a little bit and see where we go. So let's make this some cupcakes. We're gonna do maybe like a birthday order. Oh, those are pretty cute. Here we go. Okay. Let's switch it up, right? And one more. Perfect. Oh, that's really, really cute with the cupcakes. So there's pol polar lights, guys. Would you have thought to use it for birthday? I don't know that I would have, unless we weren't just kind of hanging out and playing today. So what I noticed is some of these have little the fallouts, right? Because some of these are um, punch out 
and some are not. So I don't know. I was looking at where would this go? Oh, it's on the it's the inside of that. No, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> okay. But I'm thinking like you could switch things up if you wanted to. You could punch a different strip and do like the frosting. You guys know what I mean, right? Frosting could be a different color. Okay, but what I'm doing is looking at this instead of the trees, I think maybe we're gonna use the cupcakes. So now let's get let's get working on kind of our base. And this one does look like it has a frame all the way around it, which, you know, if we do a frame, that means our cupcakes are going to be cut in a little bit, just, just to know. So I think what I'm going to do is cut it first and then, um, and then see if I want to make a frame or not, because you don't have to make a frame. And... Because we're just uh, winging it here, I'm going to start with the two and a half inch base just because I know I like that size. A two and a half inch base. So if I do put a frame around it, then that's going to make it um, like two and three quarter. Okay, so whoops. Getting used to this new dark trimmer, right? So everything's kind of backwards. There we go. Ah, hold on. Don't think I pressed hard enough on that. Let me go back. Oh, there. Okay. So here's our base. And I did look at whether I wanted the teal or this light blue. And I decided I wanted the teal. And actually, I think I'm going to flip it around because I really, I really like that teal color up there. Okay. And now we got so much pattern going on, we need to kind of tone it down, right? So now what we need to do is get some more layers in here. So let's do the lighter layer. And I do like this hound's tooth or the, um, we could do the hound's tooth or that light blue. So I'm going to come in with, let's see, either half inch. Let me look back. It looks like it's a three quarter. Let's do, let's do three quarter inch strip on the bottom. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I do like that contrast there. That might also be kind of a nice place to rest the cupcakes on, actually, now that I'm seeing that. Might be kind of fun to put the cupcakes. And so let's see about putting another layer of blue in here too. Okay, so let's do, let's do a half inch blue. This is a really pretty pattern. So we're just gonna catch a little bit of that pattern just that little bit of blue, but ooh, I do like that, right? So we're just kind of layering, layering, layering. All right, um, so we've got our base, we've got a little bit of light blue pattern, a little bit of the hound's tooth, and then we've got our um, cupcakes with the brighter blue. Okay. So, oh, what I didn't plan for is how to make a luster embellishment with uh <laughs> with cupcakes because really we don't want to see those trees do we so that would be one thing we could just hide the trees um let's see what else could we do we could i think we're going to have to just kind of go all into cupcakes and let's see we might do a shadow layer maybe we do a shadow layer for cupcakes we could do that hmm i like the little touch of white 
Okay, or, oh, we do have some swirls. We do have swirls. Let's see what the swirls look like. That's pretty too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Nope, I'm not, I'm not feeling the swirls. Not with cupcakes. Well, I think what I, I could show you. So here's my thought. If you wanted, I'm going to come back to the cupcakes, but if you wanted to just make this like a hot cocoa cozy up so, and kind of follow, um, follow the pattern again. Okay. Here's the sketch. Then what I would do kind of to finish this off, you could do like the snowflakes or let's say you wanted to do this guy. Maybe you take that one off, do this guy, do hot cocoa. Like this to me is just kind of um, warm and cozy and you don't have to have, you know, not necessarily snowy. This is warm and cozy, not necessarily snowy, something like that. And then you could do a little bit of a circle pattern. One second, let me see. I think we could do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you two different borders. Okay, so let's look at this. I'm gonna bring in this guy again, okay. And what's on the back? Oh, it's cute little polar bears are on the back. So <clears throat> this is the smallest circle pattern. And we're just going to need, actually, I just need an edge on this. So I'm just going to come around here with my red blade. Red cuts closest. Can you guys see that okay? Okay, here, so. And then I'm gonna take the same pattern and do this guy with the green blade. And that's gonna give me kind of that bit of, I need to come up here on the mat some more so I can hold it. Okay. And this is going to give me that step up here. Okay. So now we have kind of that double layer that we can use in here. Okay. All right, let me see that border again. Okay, yep, it goes right inside. So you would put this and then layer this. I don't know, I should probably stick it down for you guys. And we could do this. If you want some swirls, I think the swirls go really well with the hot cocoa. I don't think, actually, I don't think we need this one with the swirls, but I do like it with the background there. Swirls, hot cocoa. In here, maybe I'm gonna put this, pull this out here, and then you could do some hot cocoa here. And then remember there were some stickers. That's cute. I like that. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just make it. <laughs> now that I see it, let me just stick it down. Because it's it's cute. I like this one coming out like this. And we do hot cocoa. So I can see. We'll, I'll put this on a page. Okay, so this is... Okay, so here, let's go back where we started. This is a two and a half inch base. And... Because I'm going to use the swirls, I don't really want to cut it, so I'm not going to make this a frame like the original border has a frame. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. 
but I am going to put these half circles in. And I wasn't, I didn't measure because I knew I was going to be putting pieces on top and layering. But if you want to measure, you can, or if you want to cut a circle and then cut the circle in half. But I was just eyeballing it so that I could get that layered look right there. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to put the light blue strip on top. There we go. And I'm, I'm leaving just a slight reveal at the bottom. Just an ever slight reveal. Here we go. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to add the swirls and the flocking on this gives it so much dimension already. It's really cute. So there. And then I'm just going to do hot cocoa. I wonder if I could do a little tucking in here. Maybe like right in between these two. Hot cocoa weather. I need my multi-purpose tool. It's in my cart. <laughs> okay. All right. And tuck, look at how that's really cute right in there. Hot cocoa weather. So I'm going to add just a bit of adhesive back there. And then do a little tuck in. Okay, and then this one, I think we need to put that up on a little foam square or some foam tape. My latest favorite thing. Have you guys, anybody else like kind of switched over to foam tape? <laughs> I have. I don't know why. I just, I really like being able to cut my own um, size. So we're going to do hot cocoa weather. Okay, there it is. Pretty cute. Love that. And maybe we need a little sticker or two to kind of come in. Oh, there's some snowflakes. There's some other... Let's see. So there's a light blue. That doesn't show up very well, does it? We also have this guy. Those aren't showing up a whole lot. Maybe what I need is just a little bit of, hmm, I think I need some dark, a dark blue. Oh, that's cute. Maybe just a couple little snowflakes in here. Not that one. Or let's see, what's this cute little star thing? This one. Oh, that's kind of cute. Hot cocoa weather. And so they did actually load up the sheets with some little sprinkle stickers, which is kind of always fun to have, to add just a few little things for our cluster. <laughs> yes, I got the book, Sabine. Yes, <laughs> I did. Okay, so... Um, there we have kind of a one-off way to use the polar lights for kind of a non-snowy. I mean, okay, it looks a little snowy. I did put a little snowflake, but still, that's just kind of a little cold, cold weather um, border. So... Knowing me, I'm probably going to make a companion border to this. So this will probably end up on one side and I'll do a repeating border on the other side. But I do really like the idea. So again, kind of an interpretation of this border. Just done a little differently because we have different elements and different pieces that we were working with. But... The idea 
kind of originates, which is always what I think is fun. You get your inspiration and then use the collection that you want to use and then see where see where it goes, right? Yeah, it's a, it's the colors in this collection are really pretty. So what would I do if I wanted to go back to the, because I kind of wanted to share, <laughs> the cupcakes. So we could do the same thing, except in this area, what I would probably end up doing would be to grab my sticker and title binder and find something in there that says celebrate or something like that. Or we could also look at, let me see if I can pull it out really quick here. Party time. So, you know, there's still a lot going on in party time. Let's check out these colors. The colors would work. You could pull in some of this from party time. You could even, you know, I think all of this, they brought it all back, didn't they? But look at that blue. I just, I love that blue cupcake from the Polar Lights collection. So sometimes we just kind of have to look beyond what we have um, right in front of us. Or, you know, here's those embellishments. So this would be really cute to use. Hip, hip, hooray, right? You guys, I could sit here and make borders all night probably, but I do want to talk a little bit about pocket pages too. So hopefully that's enough of an inspiration. You can see using the, um, you know, the same, the polar lights, you could bring in that blue, you could use this, just grab from your stash something birthday and pop that in there. Okay, so don't, you know, I guess that's a, just the idea is um, if there's a color or something that speaks to you, combine your collections. Don't just go, oh, I can only put polar lights with polar lights. No, look at how cute polar lights looks with party time. That is really cute. Look at that. What if you what if you did this with your party time and polar lights? That would be just so much fun to make a birthday page out of, right? Maybe this one right here. Bring in this pattern and this especially for someone who's, you know, likes blues and turquoises and you've got all kinds of good stuff going on. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> yeah, as inspirations. Yes, Ruth, exactly. And, and, you know, not cut and dry rules. Exactly. That's exactly, you know, I, I hope there's always a way to kind of expand how you look at things. That's my, that's always my goal. Okay. So definitely love the cupcake. I might have to come back to that, pull something together for you. You might have to just check my Instagram feed or something fun uh, on Facebook, or we'll see where I get that post up. Okay. And let's see. Okay. What I wanted to do, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, and I want to talk about a couple other things now that I've got some creativity out of the way here with the new the new products, because new products are always really fun to look, look at. And one of the things I wanted to remind you about, I hope, um, I hope however you're doing it, since we are in the month of... Is this the right book? Yeah. Since we are in the month of November, I hope that you all have started your 30 days of gratitude. And I did two Fridays ago. So my last Friday night scrapbooking, I showed how I put these two pages together. They are so, so simple. And it's just with peekaboo pockets and 
Then um, I printed some journal cards. These are available for download and I do have some printed in my shop now. Um, and and every, all of you who ordered those, those are out in today's mail. So hopefully you will get them <laughs> super fast. And um, and here's the thing, guy. I'm already, um, I forgot yesterday. <laughs> I was not feeling good, so did not get yesterday's done. So tonight I'm gonna talk about, think about yesterday and then also today's prompt, which is in the morning, I love to. And yesterday was, I noticed this today. So I am really enjoying uh, having little things already kind of thought out um, that prompt me to do my documentation. So um, yay, Debbie, you're filling out your cards. Yes. <laughs> so um, however you're going to do it. If you're writing it in a traveler notebook, if you are writing it in a journal, you know, just kind of think every day, think of maybe a prompt or um, if you want to, you know, download the cards and do a similar layout. I think it's just such a lovely addition to our books, right? So it only takes up two pages in our family albums. Um, or big moments or, you know, however you're scrapbooking or this could be just added into, you know, everyday moments, that kind of thing. But it's a way of just documenting in writing things that you're grateful for. And um, if you, somebody asked also, if you have um, the uh, pictures, you can definitely add a picture and then just do a little bit of journaling. So it doesn't, or maybe you just want to add a whole picture and then that tells the story of what the prompt is. So, um, you know, just think of that. It doesn't always have to be writing. Maybe it's a photo that tells your story too. Okay. So hopefully that's just another little push and inspiration to remember this is our month of gratitude where we can just stop and take a minute to just reflect and um and think about all those little things that we're grateful for and in that process um i'm gonna cycle back around to something i shared a few sessions ago um which is on kind of a new concept for an album that um, I have to say, I really, it's the one album that I want to work the most on. And um, I, I had a friend here the other day and she's like, Lauren, do you ever get a chance to work on your own albums? And I said, not a whole lot. <laughs> I'm, I've, I'm usually, you know, so busy with other things. I don't get a whole, uh, a chance to work. I'm trying to change that, but I don't get a whole lot of opportunity to work. So what is very important to me, and, and this goes for any of us who are busy, right? Um, is that sometimes life is happening so quickly and so fast that the stories that are so important to remember will flash at us, but then they seem to, you know, if we don't write them down, if we don't have some way of documenting, they're gone. And when I shared this uh, idea of a few weeks ago, uh, someone said, well, Lauren, could you do a, do a page for us? <laughs> and so I thought, well, it's, it's kind of a simple approach, but yeah, I could do a page. And one of the things that I mentioned last time was that um, I do have kind of a... Um, Whoops, let me see. Let me get one here. Here it is. A pocket page guide. And I I um, made this so long ago, but it does help kind of give an idea of when you open your album, like if you're doing a pocket page album, this works also if you're adding pocket pages into your album. It gives you an idea bracket to bracket, this is a two page spread, what the layout is gonna be, okay? So 
bracket to bracket, um, it it's really on the inside. So you're not going to get, you know, you'd have to, for the front, for the very front page, you'd have to ignore this one, right? And just do this. And then for the very back page, you'd have to ignore this one and just do the back page. But then once you turn the page, you've got your layout. And then um, once again, these are for if you're going to add peekaboo pockets to your layout. So like here, this is a peekaboo pocket that I added on top of my um, multi-pocket pages. So I gave a couple spaces just to kind of write notes and give you a little roadmap. So this is now available on my website if you'd like to download the guide. If you're in my POP membership, um, Remember, these are this is free in my download section, okay? So you don't have to pay for it. But uh, I did add that to my website because that was also a request to have kind of this little roadmap. But once again, I know this is kind of a rewind, <laughs> but sometimes we don't watch everything, right? What I decided to do here was focus on story. and And so I think if I were to talk about this concept again, what I really want to ask you, and I hope maybe you can write this in the chat because I'd love to come back and read it. But what this is my question for you. What are the stories that you want to tell in your scrapbooks? And are those stories that always have photos or are they stories that always have two pages worth of photos, right? For me, what I was finding is it was really about moments. And sorry for the glare. Let me get this up a little bit. So for me, it was about moments in, in our lives and those little things where I was lucky if I snapped a photo that could, um, that could then prompt a story that I wanted to tell. And so... This whole idea, this whole concept has been really rewarding for me, and I have been scrapbooking for a long time, but it has focused my intention on really being meaningful on what I want to write down in my albums, if that makes sense, okay? And, and so sometimes... I think as paper lovers and as scrappers, you know, we get caught up in the fun of it all. And how can we make the prettiest, neatest, fun thing <laughs> to add to our book? And I love doing that too. But I also have a part of me, a big part that's, you know, weighs on my heart. And that is to learn to appreciate all those little moments that come to us in our lives. And this book has been a game changer for me personally in doing that. So it's really easy because it's a two page for every month. And you can also add, like you saw, you can add, not all, not all months have a whole lot going on, but for months that do, like we had this huge windstorm in January. And so that needs, you know, a story told. And then um, for you could, so if you have a month that needs a little bit more, you could just add those pocket pages on top. For months like this, this doesn't have any, any addition because, you know, I <coughs> barely had enough to just even get this in. And here's another perfect opportunity to use our cards. I always end up with a lot of four by six kind of quote cards in my collections. So from um, staycation, from, let me see the ones I was looking at, from, um, uh, welcome home, staycation, homestead, you know those collections, right? Relax and unwind, all those different things. Every, um, what was that other one? Something moments. There's another one, something moments. 
Oh, this one. Um, our moment. Our moment. I, I think this one actually came from there. All of those have these beautiful cards in here and this is a just a neat way to integrate that into um, our everyday moments in case you have something where you need a space filled yes um yeah and I'm gonna Ruth I am gonna I'm gonna show you that um because we're gonna we're gonna do a layout it's gonna be so simple <laughs> yeah special everyday stories when they happen and that's that's the issue that I was having is that when it was time to go back and look at my library, right, of, oh, I need to, to work on my big moments now, I would find all these little one-off pictures that were just more describing my life as it was actually happening, like what we were doing, truly, not just those big moments. But again, focusing on what's important, which for me are the stories. So what are the stories? Like, what are your favorite foods? What are the books or movies or TV shows that you're watching? Um, what are restaurants that you're going to that you're enjoying right now? Um, let's see. What are conversations that you're having? So, like, I was thinking a little bit about tonight and I thought, oh, there's, you know, conversations I'm having right now with my oldest son are about he's getting ready to transfer to an architecture school. Where would that go? That that conversation, those wonderful little conversations we're having about him working on his portfolio and, you know, that he's getting excited and what he's taken a lot of um, pre-classes and so um, at the junior college and so now he's going to you know what level he's going to transfer into and it's just been a rich opportunity this one right here um for us to talk about his next steps if i didn't have like where would i put that that's not necessarily something i'm going to take a picture of but now that my focus is now more about what do i want to remember what are the stories that i want to tell what do i want to have as those moments that are important to me and documented. This is the place. Now I have a place to put it. Okay. And I think that that is a beautiful thing to capture in a photo album. Now, here's the thing. You do not have to do it this way. <laughs> this is just one way, right? You could add these. And I think I mentioned this last time. You could just add, maybe you want to add two pages in because you're chronologically scrapbooking and maybe you just want to add in a pocket page or two pocket pages every month or at the end of a year album that are some moments that you've captured. You could do that. You could add just a few pages like this at the end of an album so, um, so that that's documented, right? Like you don't have to have it. What I'm trying to say, just do it in a way that works for you that that is meaningful for you and I even started toying with the idea of kind of you know my two favorite albums are big moments right where we're just um focusing on those special moments in our lives and this everyday moments big moments and everyday moments and now I'm almost to a point of going do I combine those two together right so like I brought, I brought this out and, and I thought this might just be something of a conversation, right? So this is my everyday moments. And then my big moments, as you've kind of seen me flip through, this is, this is my, these are my big moments, right? So I go from holiday to birthday to just those big moments but now I'm thinking maybe I do want to integrate like so I could do January. You know, this might be I might have to try it <laughs> for 2023. I could do January and then before I finish January, I could incorporate pocket page album, pocket pages. Right. And do what happened in January. What were the moments that I want to remember? And then February. So I'd flip over. We usually do for us, for our family, it's Valentine's Day. 
and then my son Adam's birthday, and sorry for the reflection. <laughs> and then after that, um, we would, you know, put in again pocket pages, right? That you could go back in and tell the everyday moments, the moments for those uh, that month, February, right? You get it. So then March, so on, and. Um, and I kind of did that in this book um, for after, well, this was 2020. So I did, I actually used pocket pages to document our COVID journey and, um, and pocket pages with, you know, peekaboo pockets on top as well. So these pages are just kind of how I've, I decided to, um, categorize you know the the goings on so this is inside you can see then this is inside those pocket pages are just right inside regular um scrapbook pages just like that okay so that's a thought what do you guys think right so you can um you can have it whatever you know if you like the idea of celebrating everyday moments you could incorporate that. And so maybe what you do is you do a um, family album. So this is my big moments. This is actually two years, almost two years. I've got, I've got a few more pages to do of, um, this is 2020 and 2021 in here. Um, and then uh, that's one album. So my thought, you know, when I went to, to big moments is that I don't, I don't want a bookshelf filled with volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes <laughs> of photos um, that don't have a whole lot of meaning, right? Well, I guess all of our photos have meaning. But for me, it was this whole, whole you know, which is where my pop, whole pop series came out of was I need to really focus on, like Stacey Julian says, you can do something with some of your photos, but you can't do something with all of your photos. So I had to pare it down. Anyhow, that was, that's a long side story, but this is, so this is actually two years, two years in one album because I pared it down to big moments. So now for 2023, right? Um, this is a thought, this is a thought. So this is 2022 that I've already started documenting my big moments because I don't want to forget those stories. Okay. And, um, and then, uh, maybe next year I'm going to combine those two. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. I'll have to come back and read them. Okay. So let's get, get going. And I still have a lot of stories, so <laughs> I am not caught up. I will never say <laughs> do as I do because... I am not caught up. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to switch that light just a little bit more again. Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can get the glare off just a bit. Because now we're working on plastic again. Right? Okay. That's a little better. <clears throat> Maybe I need to just go up, 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 up. There. Okay. Yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> it's going to be just hard not to have so pocket page albums we've got glare <laughs> okay there we go um you love this Sharon you're starting this today okay Ta -da! I've converted another one <laughs> okay so what I thought I'd do is pop over and just kind of give you an idea of how I approach a two-page spread mm. <clears throat> Now, the fun thing, too, I want to mention is that <clears throat> when you're going through your photo library, <clears throat> and we've talked a lot about this in my pop group, right? For the last two months, we have talked about our digital library and really looking at the digital library in a new way, right? And we've talked about monthly markers where you can actually put little markers in your phone so that you can go, okay, I'm looking from 
in the month of October. So that's actually how I picked a few of these photos for the month of October. And <clears throat> these are photos that I'm not going to scrapbook in two page spreads. These are photos that instead kind of tell a story and, um, and pro are prompting me to keep track of what I want to remember about last month. Okay, so this is just last month. <laughs> All right, so for October, and okay, well, oh, what I was going to mention is that the fun thing is you can switch it up and play with all different kinds of collections in a much smaller format. So this was the Our Moments collection, right? And um, and you can see I kind of pulled in a, a, a four by six card. I'm going to put my May title here. I still have some, like I said, I have a lot of work to do, but I do have some of the stories told. And you can, um, in this process, one other thing I want to mention is that you can have a lot of fun with the sizing of your photographs. So just because, let me go back to a couple other pages once again to kind of share this. Just because you have a four by six slot does not mean you need to print a four by six photo. So as you can see here, this is a four by three because I just wanted a little snippet of this event so that I could write the story because this was a very funny story. And, <clears throat> and so I didn't want this huge photo. I just wanted a little photo and then I could add the journaling. And I think that's what makes this process fun as well is that, um, you know, you can add in journal cards, you can add in some stamps, you can add in this is a die cut, this little notebook paper die cut, and kind of play with a lot of different um, types of, you know, I guess, what would you call them? Um, uh, elements of scrapbooking and, um, and have some fun with it, right? So you don't have to, I guess what I'm trying to say, don't limit yourself just to four by six photos. Remember, you can print smaller as well. And that helps you, especially if you want to get a picture and a story in one slot. Okay. All right. So, and then like this was from one of the secret box. This was the last secret box. So it's, it's a good way to kind of just have some fun with the collections. So this was October and October. So I'm flipping ahead. <laughs> you can see guys, it's just real life here. I, I will not make any promises that I'll ever be caught up, but it's real life here. So what I wanted to do was work with Golden Harvest for this layout. So I had just put a little card in here to kind of remind me of that, that I wanted to work with this um, collection because these are October photos. And so these were just a few pictures that I decided I wanted to tell a story about. And um, this one is kind of an important thing. And then one of the squares, remember, I, is where I usually do my month title. Okay, so, um, you know, just just kind of remember that, and, and maybe you don't want to do a whole month title. I like the look of that, so one of them is going to be you know, one of these squares, I'm going to come back and do my title in there. Okay. So, um, so you can see right now I have four photos. I may go back into my library and decide, is there anything else? Or maybe I don't have a photo or maybe my husband has a photo. Oh wait, there was one more. Ah, right. I did have another photo. I just remembered when I said my husband. Um, okay. So this was a fun event. So these are photos that are prompting memories. I want to keep saying that because to me, that's the whole point of this album is getting us to write our memories down, getting us to tell our stories. Okay. Okay. So, um, I have five photos. 
<laughs> I forgot I had one on the printer still. Five photos from October that when I was going through my library, kind of, again, going through the process, you go through your library and you go, okay, October, um, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of, my kids aren't dressing up for Halloween anymore. So I didn't have a whole lot of photos to scrapbook for October. But these again were meaningful photos that I wanted to print so I could tell a story about. So that's where I start. I start with looking through my photo library and then printing. And this is a great way to, to get our photos out of our phones, out of our phones or off our computer and in a place where we can enjoy and, and see them. And then what we do, and then what you do is just go, okay, so if I have these, these are kind of full size photos. I need something to fill these spaces. One of them I know I want to have as a title, but then the other space, <coughs> I'm gonna put some journaling, okay? So now I'm kind of looking through and um, this orange paper is really popping out at me. Love it. This I think was from the Shades Of pack. So I like that. So that might have to go in here. Look at the strong colors, which is just, and, and I had pulled this card from um, the collection too. So look at how pretty that is. That just needs to be trimmed to a four by six. So I'm gonna pull some of that. I think I am gonna pull in some pumpkin paper. Look at how cute that would be right here next to this. And this photo tells a story because and, you know, maybe these examples will help. <clears throat> Why do I have a picture of our kitchen counter with Halloween decorations on it? For us, the reason I have this picture is because it has been over two years <laughs> since I have been able to pull out my, quote, decorations because we've been under construction for so long. This was the first time when I said, you know what? Our kitchen's not even really done. You know, we still have wires and knobs and things like you can see the knobs are not on the, these cabinets yet. We have things that we can do, but I, I'm i putting out my decorations. So this was the first time, you know, we had, I said, I want in our kitchen, I want this little, it's kind of like a little beverage center. And that is where I'm going to put our decorations. That was part of my planning in the kitchen. And so to be able to do that, that was a huge win for me. That felt so good, right? Because after two years to finally be able to do something that I had in my vision for so long, you know, for years and years and years to see that come to be made me feel good. Now, do you see the story? That's why that photo is there. That's the richness of the story that I want to capture in this album, how it felt to finally, I mean, I could cry about it right now, <laughs> to finally dust off those Halloween decorations and put them out. You know, it's been such a process for us. And it, it you know, when you get through some of those, it feels so good. It just feels so good. Okay. Those are the moments. Those are the meaningful moments that we want to capture, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm just looking for a couple other papers. Um, I do I do love this Golden Harvest collection. So um, let's see. I might add some of that green. And then I know we've made our, already made some beautiful pages with these already. There was another color. <clears throat> Let's see. Ooh, that's pretty too. We've got some fall leaves. So I might just kind of go orange and green and a little bit of brown. I think there was some, some of that brown wood paper. So I'll just pull kind of this out as I'm looking through my Golden Harvest collection and, <clears throat> and kind of work with, with this. And what I'm seeing right off the bat is I have some dark brown over here. So I think what I want to do is actually bring that over for my title block. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And my title will probably have some layers. Now, we're going to get to see <laughs> get to use my little 
hack on the trimmer, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this at six inches, and then I'm gonna trim it at four. And the reason I did it this orientation is because of this wood orientation here, okay? Love this wood paper. Okay, so now I have that square. So you can see how these can come together pretty quickly. I'm gonna do the same thing for the pumpkins. So I'm gonna bring this over to that six inch. And see, I'm so bad, like I scrapbook on top of my scrapbooks. <laughs> but that's another reason I love that little hack. Um, okay, <laughs> already coming in useful there. Okay, oh, I can see this paper. I'm gonna to have to trim it off this end. That end is not straight. Okay, right here. So this is gonna go underneath. And again, this is probably where I'm gonna do some journaling. But since this paper is so cute, I'm probably gonna cut that journaling box down a little bit um, and see, but I have a story to tell. So we'll have to just kind of check that out. But you're, you're kind of, we're kind of going through the process, right? And then we are going to, so we've done these, set those aside. This one, I just want to, I think this is already at four. Yeah, that's at four. So I'm just gonna cut this at six. And this one will go here, and then I think, let's see. I think I might actually bring some of this green in over here instead of the fall leaves. I think I'll do some of this green right down here. I like that green, kind of brings the green over from that side. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna cut this at four. First, since this is a scrap, and then I'm going to cut this at six. So that gives me kind of my base for all of these different sections, right? And then once you're looking at all of this, actually, this might be a good time. This would be a beautiful insert piece. Okay, so um, in doing the insert and um, thinner paper, you could actually double up thinner paper to uh, create the insert here. Uh, so if you want one, one paper on one side and another paper on the other side. So this is um, October, November. So let me see, you know, like if you wanted to do, I'm not sure what I'm going to put on for this month, but say I wanted, oh, that red is pretty you could do, you know, double it up for the insert. And it's about, you know, it, it's a little tricky, I think, to kind of figure out exactly, but let me see. Sometimes if I go, I think it's, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, five eighths. I think that's what we had, I had mentioned before. It's about five eighths. I'm pretty sure. So let's try that. Five, let's see, right? And you might have to adjust it. So um, for the strips, sometimes with the thicker paper, you have to cut it a little narrower. I'm just, you know, just so, just so you're aware of that. Okay, so I'm going to do, I am going to try five eighths right here. Right there. And let's see how that works. But giving yourself yeah, that's about perfect, five-eighths. 
giving yourself kind of that visual is also helpful when you're planning your layout too. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm not going to do all of this because this is, it is a little bit of time, takes a little care to do the inserts, but I am going to kind of show you how to do that. <clears throat> okay, and you'll get the idea when I lay these down, how that makes a difference, right? So now, see how that just kind of frames everything in? Oops. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, did we want to go small? No, we didn't. We didn't want to go small. What did I do? <laughs> oh, sorry, folks. <laughs> my my notebook hit. Um, <laughs> my notebook hit the. Oh, that's. Hold on. Um, hmm. Now, how do I make this bigger? Oh, let's see. Can I pick camera? There we go. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, boo. It went really small. Okay. Um, Okay. <laughs> I see there's some good stuff happening in the chat, you guys. So I love that. I'm going to have to come back and, and read. Question Sabine has, do you still scrap October with more pictures, but somewhere else? Or are five pictures all you document for a month? So here's the thing. Like I was just saying, I have switched now to big moments for my family books. And we don't have anything that really happens in October. Like we don't have birthdays or, you know, all that kind of thing. So, and my kids are not doing Halloween. <laughs> so for me, that's another reason why I love doing the, the moment type albums because it helps not lose it. So technically the answer to that question is no, this would be it for October because I don't have an event. I don't have a big moment. Now, November, that's different because my daughter Audrey's birthday is in November and also Thanksgiving is in November, right? And my mother-in-law's birthday is in November. So those are big, big, big moment events that are going to get scrapped in my big moments album. But now what I'm thinking is I might want to kind of just combine both of these. So maybe next year, what that would look like is it would go September. If there were some, anything exciting that happened, we don't really have birthdays in September <laughs> either. Um, then, you know, it might just be big moments, big moments, and then add in those scrapbook pages, right? <laughs> Carrie thought she hit a button. <laughs> it was all me. That was me. Te technical difficulties. Okay. So I hope, does that make sense? It's it's really kind of this whole evolution process. And, and here's the thing, just because you started scrapbooking one way doesn't mean you have to always scrapbook that way. I'm open to change because the last thing I wanna do is feel weighted down by the scrapbooking process. I want it to be an enjoyable process that, um, you know, that, that is meaningful and is fun. And that's why this kind of pocket page, um, type scrapbooking is really, it's really enjoyable for me. Okay. So <clears throat> I hope that answers. So here's those strips, five eighths inch is about the right size. And then, like I said, if say you want on the other side to do, actually, I think what I'm going to do it, it is kind of nice with the pattern paper, having a, a strip on the back gives it a little more weight. So I think I'm going to come in here and just say I love this red. This would be pretty for Thanksgiving photos. Um, I don't know. 
measure three times, cut once, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and stick these together before I show you how to slide those in, just to give this a little more weight. But if you um, use cardstock, you don't really need to do that. Or remember, you can also add in fun little embellishments as well, right? So that's always, always a fun thing to do. Okay, so does that kind of make sense? That's how I would get this layout put together. And then um, I would do a title here and then add in some fun little journaling prompts. And again, it doesn't have to be a full card. Like being able to see some of the pattern behind it is what I think is really fun. And also, this is a great opportunity to, maybe you're going to add in some fall leaves, right? And then you're going to put in maybe a little title, fall is here. You could do that. Maybe this goes at the top. Fall is here. And then you could put in October somewhere here if you wanted to do a title like that. You could even use this for September if you wanted to do that as well. Okay, um, and then one last thing would be, you know, adding stickers or embellishments. Once again, would be, I think, just a finishing touch that even on pocket page albums, it's so fun to add in all these things. So let's see. I don't know. Maybe we want to do, I don't know if we want to do, I think I kind of like the leaf theme. So we could add in a few leaves down here and then, um, ah, Where's my little box? So I keep a box of my journal cards. <clears throat> and where did they go? Oh, here they are. Okay. And we are getting, it's, it's getting late, so I need to wrap things up, but I'll just kind of share. I love Dot Grid as one of my favorites, so I just kind of keep a stash of these printed out. And so I would just take that and add in, cut this down a bit and add in a place for journaling. And this one, this photo actually has a lot to, of story to tell. So actually this one, this may go, this journaling may go up here, this journaling may go here because this has a big story to tell about it. And then title here. And then for these, these also have stories. So um, I actually would probably end up putting these in peekaboo pockets so that I could tell this, the longer story inside. And that's what I love is being able to have the flexibility is like, do I want to tell a bigger story? Fine. I'm going to pop this in a peekaboo pocket. I'm going to flip that up. And then I have the whole inside to tell the story about that. Okay. So that's kind of the process. I hope, I hope that's helpful. I'm not going to actually stick everything down for the sake of time right now. But what I do want to do is <clears throat> kind of share a little bit about... I'm going to try not to push that button again. Hold on. <laughs> push the button again. One second, friends. Let me go back to overhead camera. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to move my little stream deck out of the way. Okay. <laughs> We're back. Okay. So what you want to do is uh, make sure you have a cutting mat and... We're gonna need um, an X-Acto knife, very sharp X-Acto knife. <laughs> you guys, if you could see what my room looks like after a Friday night scrapbooking. 
It is a mess in here right now. Okay. <laughs> so um, you're going to need an X-Acto knife. And then I always like using a ruler. This is such an inexpensive little ruler, but it has a metal guard, okay, which I like. And then you're going to ever so gently, ever so gently, just cut a just like go through <clears throat> the very top of your peak of your pocket page with your razor with your exacto knife just ever so slightly okay just kind of it's better to go a few times and kind of check did i get through and if you slice through, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't get all the way through, so I'm going to try again. Um, but just don't cut all the way across. <laughs> I'm sorry if my head is in the way. Okay, but I'm really trying to see where I am here. So I'm going to have to push a little harder. Okay, let's see. And then I usually just take my knife and see if I can separate that little slit but did you see it does take a little bit of extra time and care yeah and then if you need to open it a little more you can just take your blade and just help it along a little bit I'm trying to get that in there my blade this is not my favorite um exacto knife and i oh there it goes I'm not sure where it went Okay, so I have the slit, but who did it. I have the slit cut. So it's from one side to the other. Okay, you can see my knife is kind of going in there at the top. So what I'm going to do is stick these together with my adhesive. And that's going to give this a little more um, structure to slide in. Okay. This is when you know how straight of a cutter you are. <laughs> okay. So I have the orange leaves and now you just slide that in to your slit and I can see I need just an itsy bit more there okay and then that should go right in okay ta-da we've got we've got it there it goes <laughs> So you can see, you kind of having that extra little bit with pattern paper, having two pieces back to back really does help in pushing that in. Okay, so there you have it. Now, can you put punched pieces in there? Absolutely, that would be totally fun. You could do that. Could you put um, uh, sticker strips in there? Absolutely. Stick them to a paper. Stick them in there. You can do whatever you want. It's just so fun. And it adds that little bit of um, finishing touch, in my opinion, to your layout. Okay, what did I do? <laughs> like I said, my space is a mess right now. Okay, well, I'll just go ahead and put this back so you can kind of see where we went tonight with our pocket pages. So here, here, title, over here. And I will add, I, I started with my months, so I will add months back in, in, in my title block. Do, I love just doing like an offset journal that you can have a little space over here to decorate and there you have it. So you can see just sliding that little 
piece of paper in the sides just makes such a difference in, in getting that finished layout look. And there you have it. Pocket Page Layouts 101. And can you integrate pocket pages in your normal scrapbooks? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you do other things besides uh, everyday moments? Absolutely. You can do whatever you want. You can have a lot of fun with this whole process. So um, <laughs> I hope you like it. Did. All right. So um, let me check in really quick. Um, Shri, I know <laughs> December daily, my friend, I, that is my next project. I promise December daily is getting started this weekend. Okay. Let me, um, let me just kind of come back for a second and, uh, let's see. Just talk a little bit about some of your questions. All right. Oh, gosh, it is dark in here now. <laughs> okay. Um, I I see I missed a lot of really good things in the... Um, whoops. Cancel. I don't want to do that. I just want... Cute. Okay. Let me check questions. Okay. Would you combine the regular pages and pocket pages if you put it all in one album? Pam, I hope I got that answered for you. I would. Actually, that's what I'm thinking of doing for 2023. Now that I've had a chance to focus on understanding and absolutely loving the everyday moments and the process of being intentional about documenting the things that are meaningful, I think my next step is now to kind of combine those. So I'm going to have, you know, a yearly album with pocket pages and traditional pages, um, or they could be 12 by 12 top loading, you know, pocket pages, multi-pocket and top loading, but combining big moments and everyday moments. That's, that's kind of where I think I'm going for next year. Okay. And, um, and then Sabine, you, um, okay. I think I got that question about scrapping October. Cherie, when is December daily? <laughs> um, it is going to be a class. Okay. It is too long. <laughs> December daily is too long. It's usually a three hour class and is way too long for YouTube. So I, I'm working on that. That's going to be my next um, go-to thing. And Sabine, you said, since you came late, um, polar bear punch on the fence about it. Not sure how often you'd use it. And, um, yeah. Okay. So I don't think we talked all about polar bear, but I will show you the punch. Let me get back down to the chat and, um, thank you guys so much for being here and, and just having fun. So this is the polar bear. And, um, we mentioned earlier, I don't have, po you know, yeah, it's great if you went on a, an Alaskan cruise. Brown bears. Yeah, there we go. Sandy's got all the things in there. Brown bear, grizzly bear, school mascot. Yeah, so much fun. But they're cute. Like, can you imagine that punched with brown and black bears? That would be really cute. So they don't have to just be. Um, and then you know, if you, maybe you have a term of endearment, you know, cuddly bear, or I like to cozy up with you. That would be a cute, like you reading books to someone special and then doing a cute little border, you know, you're, you're my cuddly bear, something like that. Okay. And black bears. Yes. And I'm definitely going to use that punch because that's one of the, pa one of the theme pages I want to do are all those crazy bear photos we get here um with the bears and just yesterday or the day before I think I had the guy I think they're getting ready to hibernate because he was trying to get under my craft room again had to go knock on the window and say no 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 <laughs> you need to go you're not gonna hibernate under my craft room tonight <laughs> and a trip to the zoo yeah awesome so the the collection for December daily is going to be the new Christmas collection 
absolutely sure. So, um, and I'll probably use all the pieces. So when I get going on that, oh, mama bear too. That's a really cute one too, Cindy. Yeah, mama bear. Wouldn't that be cute? Mama bear and baby bear. I think there was a book about that, wasn't there? Oh, I have to get some of my kids' books out, children's books out for that. Okay, before we wrap up, we've been going a while. <laughs> I want to just give you a couple little updates. So uh, the next Scrap With Us is going to be November 26th. And I really love hearing that you guys like the collaboration I'm doing with Kylie Kingham. She is just so amazing and creative. And um, she's such a blast to work with. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And we are actually, even though it's November, we're going to be doing Christmas pages. So we're a little kind of behind. I know we just finished Happy Hauntings. And so that video that you see this card up is now up on both of our YouTube channels. So I hope you have a chance to go watch that. It was really fun. I had a, I had a fun time um, teaching that class. Kylie has a, a beautiful um, title page that she created. So our next one will be on Christmas in November. It'll be the 26th and that will be at 5 p.m. And um, <laughs> Sabine, I have a bear who wants to be under my craft room, but he, he's been trying to get in. There's a crawl space under here. And so he's been trying to rip off the wood panel. We had to screw in a wood panel so he couldn't get under there <laughs> with big, thick screws. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Also, um, in case you haven't, I promised we were going to talk just for a minute. What is the big deal about carts? Well, if you have been watching Tidy Up Tuesday, then you know, we have been talking a lot about my favorite organizer, my favorite, if the thing that I love the most in my craft room is my cart. And if you're part of our pro, my pop, pop, seer, pop Facebook group, Progress on Projects Facebook group, um, then you'll know I've we've been doing a lot of posting about how everybody has their cart organized. And I'm doing a giveaway. By next Tuesday, if you have a photo up in my pop group, you could get entered in for a drawing. And every Tuesday, I'm coming on live here on YouTube and Facebook for another Tidy Up Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, we're going to talk about binders. What's in my binders? I'm going to tell you all about that. Donna had, Donna put up a little post in, um, in my uh, Facebook, my pop Facebook group. Okay, that's it. And she um, gave you a sneak peek about what's in one of my binders. But you guys know I'm a big binder girl, too. And I love, <laughs> yeah, Annette says, oh, I love me some carts. There are so many great ideas. And Debbie, I love that you crinkled. <laughs> if you want to know what she's talking about, then you've got to go watch my Happy Hauntings uh, video <laughs> on crinkling paper. It was fun. Okay, so join the POP Facebook group if you haven't already, if you want to learn more about carts and what we have in our trusty favorite companions. There are some awesome ideas about that. And um, <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of people who are just enjoying Tidy Up Tuesdays because we're just going around and looking at different ways of organizing different areas for you. So um, yes. Yep. So Lynette, she's got a plan to work on her binders. So we can talk about binders next week. I'll show you what's in. I have a lot of binders. I have different types of binders and I'm going to share what I have in my binders and uh, some different ideas on how you can use them to organize in your craft room. And I did share one just last Tuesday, which is my, um, my, uh, I don't think I have it here. It's my uh, punch organization binder. And I have a video on that too. Okay. All right, friends, we are way, way <laughs> late tonight, but it was sure fun. And even though I wasn't that prepared, I hope you did have a good, enjoyable evening. And thank you for hanging in there and joining me tonight. And until I see you next time, 
I hope you take time to craft some joy and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.